Welcome to the Dell Storage SC Series Best Practices with VMware vSphere. My name is Darren Schmitz, part of the Storage Applications Engineering team here at Dell EMC. In this video, I'll be highlighting just a few of the best practices found in the Best Practices Guide. These best practices, such as setting driver module settings, setting the path selection policy, as well as some tips regarding LUN numbering, virtual machines per data store, and other tools will help to ensure stability and performance interacting with VMware vSphere. One of the first and most important settings you can set on your vSphere cluster is to set the driver module settings in each host. Now, depending upon the protocol, whether it be iSCSI or Fiber Channel, these commands are different, but they accomplish essentially the same things. The first thing is queue depth tuning. By opening the queue depth wide open, this allows the applications running within the virtual machines to control the performance going to the SAN. The second is controller failover protection. By setting the login retry count and the port down retry, this allows adequate time for the controllers to fail over. The next important thing to set is the path selection policy for the storage array type plugin. When a volume is presented to a vSphere host, that host detects it and assigns it the Alua SATP module. By default, the path selection policy for the SATP Alua module is most recently used or MRU. Best practice is to set the Alua SATP module to round robin. This allows for equal distribution of load across all ports in the host. The next best practice is LUN numbering. Use the built-in mapping profiles in the SC series to keep the LUN numbering consistent between paths and hosts in the cluster. This keeps everything organized. One of the benefits of ESXi is that it permits gaps in the LUN sequence. This allows you to create an organizational pattern. For example, LUNs 10 through 20 are application servers, LUNs 21 through 30 are database servers, and so on. One tip if you're planning on using live volume is to create separate LUN patterns at each site by using LUNs 1 through 100 at site A and 101 through 200 at site B, it prevents future conflicts with live volume and LUN numbering across the cluster. A common question addressed in the guide is how many virtual machines to put on each data store. The answer is that it is completely subjective, but it is dependent on I.O. load and contention. Best practice is to start by putting 15 to 25 virtual machines on the data store monitor the queue depth for I.O. contention, and increase or decrease the number of virtual machines as necessary. To control how many virtual machines go on each data store, be sure to right size it. You can always expand it later as necessary. Another common question is when to use RDMs over VMFS. The answer is that most storage related needs are solved with VMFS, and that raw device mapping should be used as the exception and not the rule. An example of when to use RDMs is for SAN-based software that requires direct access to the volume. To ease administrative burden with your vSphere cluster, it is recommended to use the VMware vSphere Web Client plugin. This web plugin is packaged in the SITV OVA appliance available for download on Dell.com. This plugin automates day-to-day -day storage tasks such as taking snapshots, configuring replications, and recovering virtual machines. One of the advantages to using the web plugin is that it follows all of the best practices for adding and removing data stores and RDMs from the cluster. Another best practices tip in the guide is Appendix D. It lists all of the recommended and optional settings that you can apply to hosts in your cluster. Think of this as a cheat sheet for experienced admins so they can quickly reference commands they should apply to their cluster. Thanks for watching. The Dell EMC SC Series Best Practices with VMware vSphere Guide highlighted in this video can be found by clicking on the link in the video description below. For more information and other related technical documents, please visit dell.com storage resources.